Hi, I'm Anthony from Return to Israel, Christians in support of Jewish sovereignty. A few days ago, the Feast of Hanukkah with the lighting of a candelabra just began. We are pleased to join our friend Gedalia in the old city of Jerusalem to talk about what this really means. So Gedalia, tell us what is Hanukkah really all about and what does it really mean in the city of Jerusalem? Hey Anthony, great question, but first and foremost, it's a beautiful night here in ancient city, the old, old city of Jerusalem, right here at the Kotel, Harabite. And as for your question, listen, over 2,000 years ago, the quote-unquote enlightened Jews and the Greeks took aim at destroying the fabric of what it was to be a Jew and denying the Torah, forbidding Torah study, halting all priestly services in the temple right up here and, de and, de and, and desecrating it with foreign sacrifices. And the, the focus of this aggression was here in Jerusalem, the eternal capital of the Jewish people. Now, Jerusalem was ground zero of this war against the quote-unquote old ways. And as we see even today, there's a secular war against God-fearing people. Whether they are Jews or Christians, all we need to do is turn on the news and we'll see these attacks. But here in Jerusalem, it's even stranger. World bodies have even had the audacity to pass resolutions denying the Jewish connection to our most holy place. So you ask me, what's the significance between Hanukkah and Jerusalem? Well, Hanukkah is a commemoration of the successful defensive war against the Greeks and these quote-unquote enlightened Jews who sought to extinguish the Jewish soul. This battle which took place in the holiest place for the Jewish people, here in Jerusalem, right up there on Harabite. So let me explain. Today, most people throughout the world associate Hanukkah with lighting the menorah, that it's the festival of lights, uh, that it's a miracle that took place. And the, you know, the, the priests of the temple right up here, they found oil just enough for, for one day in the menorah, but it lasted eight. And that's all true. But what it leaves out is the, the torture, the defilement, and the attempt to erase Jewish people from its Torah, its temple, and its holy city of Jerusalem. So the real story of Hanukkah is really the Jewish woman who watched her seven sons being tortured and slaughtered by the Greeks because she refused to eat pork. And these attacks on the fabric of the Jewish soul was a, was a declaration of war. And as we know, the zealots stood up, they fought back, and eventually succeeded in ridding the land of Israel from one of the most powerful nations of the world. And the restrictions on Torah study and temple service, they were lifted and the Jewish people celebrated sovereignty in the Holy Land and their holy city of Jerusalem. Okay, Gedalia, so the rededication of the temple goes back to the era of the Maccabeans. Can you tell us what they were really fighting for and what was happening at that time? Yeah, sure, Anthony. So listen, what they were fighting for is, is, is nothing we don't see today. There are many Jews throughout the world who have rejected what it means to be a Torah Jew and redefine this Jewish identity as being some sort of social justice or enlightenment movement. But on the other hand, there are today people who are proud Jews, who are fighting for the reestablishment of their ancient culture in their land. And I'll tell you what, wow, are they getting pushback. They're being called zealots, as the Maccabeans were called. They're being called extremists, right wing. They're being labeled as settlers as like, Jews are foreign people in Judea. So the fight 2,000 years ago is the same fight we're seeing today. A fight against the Jewish people who have a deep sense of national pride, who believe that the Jewish people belong in the land of Israel and believe in complete sovereignty. Okay, the New Testament in John chapter 10, verse 22, records that Jesus went up to Jerusalem to the Temple Mount in honor of this rededication of the temple. But the temple is not standing. So what does Hanukkah really symbolize for the Jews today? And how can we as Christians become involved in this celebration? So Hanukkah is a celebration of the Jewish people's national identity and pride. That the center of this war was there, the Temple Mount. In Judaism, we believe that all physical things have a spiritual dimension. And that the Temple Mount is not just simply some piece of real estate but that it's God's dwelling place when the Jewish people have its temple constructed. And that's what the Temple Mount is like a vessel for the Jewish people to bring God down to this world. That's not to say that God doesn't exist everywhere all the time, 
but that the Temple Mount has some sort of higher spiritual status. And as for, listen, as for Christian involvement in the celebration, let me say this. First and foremost, Christian involvement shouldn't take place within just a few days of the year. It should happen every single day. The Christian people are a powerful body throughout the world at all levels of government and positions of influence. And we need Christians to see this power as a duty and an, as a responsibility. A responsibility to continue to bring God into this world, to support the Jewish people's job to bring God into this world and to leverage the power both in the spiritual and physical realm. So if Christians wanted to do something, they could lobby their government leaders, they could call them, they could write to them, they could post on social media with one clear message that the Jewish people are back in their ancestral homeland and we will be part of the story in paving the way for complete redemption. So would you say then, Gedalia, that the lighting of the candle labra and the celebration of Hanukkah is symbolic of the Jewish restoration and complete sovereignty? All right, listen, Anthony. So as you just heard, I, I personally believe that lighting the menorah is symbolic for the victory against those who sought to destroy us both spiritually and physically. Unfortunately, I may be considered by many as being a zealot, right wing, a, and an extremist. And, and you know what? In the words of my friend Yishai Fleischer, I am an extremist. I extremely love the people of Israel. I extremely love the Torah. I extremely love the land of Israel. I extremely love that I am taking an active role in the return of the Jewish people to their ancestral homeland. But there are too many Jews and non-Jews in the world who, on one hand, celebrate Hanukkah as a festival of lights, but in reality are actively seeking to destroy or even extinguish this real light, the spark within every person, within every Jew. And this connection to the land, the connection to Jerusalem, and, are, and they're, they're trying to make this disconnection or doing whatever they can to get in the way of full sovereignty and restoration. But if these same people took the time to stare into these lights, to take time to look deep within themselves, to look and delve deep into the story of what it is to be Jew in this world, I think that the inner spark will come out and the natural extension of this deep connection would be to support the Jewish people's right to live, to build, and to take complete control over their ancestral homeland. Well, thank you, Gedalia, for taking time to join us on the Temple Mount in the old city of Jerusalem. And we want to thank all of those who watched this video with us. And if you uh, appreciate it and liked it, please like it on the uh, Facebook and uh, sharing and help us to be a part of Christians in support of Jewish restoration and sovereignty. Thank you and God bless.